Hey every pony, New Leaf here, and today we are here for my highlights of my travels at UK PonyCon, but also of course during my journeys in Nottingham itself because I was there as a tourist, and as always, if you want to skip to the pony part, there's a timestamp. But without further ado, let's get into this magical adventure of Britannia, of caves, and crazy food. Let's hit it! And this time our journey begins at a very unique place. This time we're starting at an airport, everypony. Probably a first time on this channel, and so I busted through the gates, being lost for a good 20 minutes, looking for my flight. Look at this board, you will be lost here looking for where you're supposed to go, but eventually... I made it to the center area of this place. Seriously, look at how massive this is. This is just the welcoming room. And um, over here we have one of the many, many planes that are there. I think Frankfurt is the biggest airplane in all of Germany, if not all of Europe. But eventually we had to get downstairs and get to our own airplane, and because it was so far away, we were actually given a bus to ride in. How cool is that? That's the, the second transportation mode we were using this time. And uh, we would get to this much smaller plane, it looked kind of adorable, but it was kind of suitable because this was not super long as a journey, it was only about an hour worth of a flight, so this was pretty nice, but let's take a look at the inside. And while it was rainy, but after going through the whole safety procedures and things you need to watch out for when being in a plane, the pilot got rid of them in the best way. Take a look at this crazy liftoff. That is pretty impressive, isn't it? But take a look as we as we fly above the clouds. Isn't that view impressive? But the view only gets better from here on out. Look at this. The fossil seatbelt sign is now switched off, but we recommend that you keep your seatbelt fastened whenever seated. Be careful when opening yeah, ponies. This is what it looks like above the clouds. Look at how insanely blue it is. See, this is what Pegasi get to see all the time. It's pretty, pretty cool. And over here, we get an even better view. Look at how dark blue it is. It feels like you're about to go into space any moment. But it's also curious to see what you get below. Look at how fluffy and tiny those little clouds look. It is just a different world up here, you know? But, um, listen to this. You can just hear the airplane humming while you are flying majestically through the sky. That is just something so, so beautiful. But, ponies, take a look here. You see down there those little white sticks that are poking out of the sea? We see them a little better here. Those are actually wind turbines, every pony. Yes, and they are in the water as well, and you don't usually get to see them else how. So this is just one of the many unique sights that you get to see up here. But also, can we talk about how peaceful this is? You could just be here for hours and hours and be entertained with just this view. But the onboard entertainment would get even better. Look at this, there is cookies on board. I immediately like this place already 10 times more. But eventually, we had to land. Look at this. And here is the official landing. Look at how we fly into Birmingham. Kind of a rough landing though, with someone who has feathered wings, I'd say it's kind of a 6 out of 10 landing, but you know, at least it didn't crash or anything, so 
It's an acceptable landing, I say, but the first thing I saw when I got out of this airplane um, was this, the next mode of transportation. With Roller Coaster being the next mode of transport on this list, we arrive at this unsuspecting advertisement, but be, look at what it says. There is science at Nottingham Trent University, and y'all know where the convention takes place, so I know for a fact that this weekend there was no science being done there. <laughs> Does make you wonder how they knew about this, though, eh? Kinda, kinda creepy. But I actually had to get there, and the only way to get there was to leave the airport. Look how it says, way out. And in Birmingham, that means using a train, and we use the train to get here. This was Birmingham City, and because I had to wait like three hours to catch the next train, we got to take a look at the shopping center was just outside, so let's see what they have. We have a cookie store, a dedicated cookie store. Why don't we have that in Germany, huh? St step your game up, everybody. We would be eating those cookies in the hotel room, so there's a taste test coming up in just a bit. But what I did eat right away was this. A Subway footlong sidekick is something I'd never heard about before, so... Let's take a look at this. This is a little roll that is filled with cheese and um, some meat things, and it's actually super delicious, and there's actually a lot of it, so this fills you up pretty nicely. And then I took a look at the, um, the shopping center some more. Look at this. If you can tell already, this place is a massive. It had an adventure mini golf. It had a bunch of security cameras. Look at how many there are. It had a comic store which sold um, a lot of Japanese snacks and toys like you see over here. Um, but outside, you literally have a church that just waves at you, so there is just so much in this one little building. But I went back inside because I thought if there's a shopping mall, there might be a toy store, and I was not mistaken. I was looking for Pony and found Pony. Look at this, a shelf dedicated to G5 stuff. You already know we're gonna get some of that, but seriously, ponies, I'm probably gonna order this and have it delivered to me, and we can take a look at some of this. And if you take a look here, they even have Equestria Girl, some of the merch that is sort of not so popular, is represented here. This was actually a pretty big toy store, but eventually had to get back out and catch my train out to Nottingham. And look at how beautiful the sun is. This was a brisk afternoon with warm sunshine, about as good as it could get. If you remember the last time I came here, I got blasted with the rain. Not so much of this time. But um, the sights outside were so pretty. Look at these these lakes. It is such a nice drive out there. I think train is also sort of a pretty one. But we have to add train as the next mode of transport as well, besides roller coaster and airplane. But then we would also notice a little bit of a factory in the sunset every pony because yes, by that time it was like five in the evening and it was getting pretty late. But I woke up because I noticed this. I didn't know Derpy had her own town. But what kept me awake even more was the next stop, which was Nottingham itself. Curious, I've been here a year ago. Wonder what has changed, but in all seriousness, it was so great to be back. And this spot right here is the exact same area where I took a photo the last time I came here. Gosh, that was nostalgic. But I had to get to the hotel, and the only way to do that is by going through the town. And, um, yeah, look at this pretty little site of a river. I don't know what it's called, but that was a spontaneous pretty picture to take. I also saw some toilets. I don't know why they would rent them, but I guess it's just someone's business idea. Eventually, I did get to my hotel, and let's take a bit of a tour through this room. Ooh, look at this room. Oh, this looks kind of spacious, but I see there is a door. Is this... The Chamber of Secrets? No, it is not. It is not the Chamber of Secrets, ponies, but this looks like a pretty fire room. Oh boy. Pretty sweet, isn't it? But I also picked up some snacks, so let's have a taste test right now. Well, everybody, so we are here with our first little snack from the UK, and we're going to try two things. Greg's Pizza and, um, let's see, what is this even? Old Mount Cider. You know, we, we're, we're in the land of the British, we got to try some cider. But let's start off with this 
this pizza because Greg's is kind of hyped to me and I want to see what this is about. Mmm. 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 Oh, this is good. Oh, this is good right here, Polish. Mmm. But something tells me later this weekend or this week I'm gonna get to try Domino's for the first time and I have a feeling Domino's is gonna just beat this, but this is still pretty good, mind you. All right. But seriously, let's go over to the cider and see how this does. As someone who's tried so many ciders on this channel, you never know how it goes, right? And ponies. Here we actually have the same thing again, but this time with a different camera because I bought a new one. And uh, what do you think? Which one of them looks cooler? Oh, this hits hard. This is good. I like it. What do you mean what's happening out there? I tell you, you cannot have anything, but... Hold, please. Someone wants my food. And in it goes. Ooh. Let's give this a nice little tasting, everybody. Looks clear, doesn't it? Let's see what this is. Oh, wow. Uh, wow, this is actually really, really good. This is refreshing. You know, this tastes of notes of grape and, of course, lime. It says kiwi and lime, but it tastes grapey a little bit, too. I like this. This is super refreshing cider. Well done, despite no apparent apples in here. Or is there apples? Let me check. Yep, no apples. Um, <laughs> despite this, it is really amazing, so... What can I say? This is amazing. This is already a, a massive win, this first little snack. But there is more. Well, that was delicious, but we got more food. Let's eat it with this. Oh, I need to open it first. Hold. This is a katsu chicken pouch, so I don't know what that means, but I know what chicken is, and I like it, so we try this. Mmm. Mmm. Crunchy! Look, there's things inside. Ooh, spicy. I like that. Mmm. Oh, this is already nice. Greg's is so awesome, man. This tastes great. It's not super expensive either. This is perfect for, you know, filling yourselves up after a day where you got up at four in the morning like me. <laughs> so, Ripony, we move on to dessert. In the top left corner, we have a milk chocolate cookie, different than what I had the last time, and at the bottom right is a double chocolate cookie, so basically an over-the-top version of this, so let's see how they've done them, every pony. Cookies are a very important thing to me, and if you can make a good cookie, you're very trustworthy. Let's see what they've done with the double chocolate. Mmm. -hmm. Oh my gosh, this is crunchy. They they've nailed these, every pony. At least this one. The texture is spot on because there's this this exact in between of either going too mushy or too hard, and this is exactly in the center. And on top of that, the flavor is absolutely outstanding. It smacks you in the face with chocolate, as I'd expect it to do. Perfect. This is about as good as it gets. I know this isn't everybody. Some people think this is too much, but for me, this is exactly what I want. This is good. All right. What can the classic offer, I wonder, huh? Let's see what you got. Oh. Mmm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is good too, though. That milk chocolate compared to the dark chocolate you used to does give this a different flavor, though. And the texture is really good as well. They've, I think they've, did they like bake them at the same time? Those, those have similar texture. Those are amazing cookies. A lot better than what we had the last time, every pony. This is 10 out of 10. Oh, I like these. All right, ponies. I'm gonna have this dessert and then I'm probably be going to bed. You see this? The camera was eyeing these cookies. It wanted some. Too bad. My cookies. But what was also curious is they had this massive bathtub and you know, Getting into one of these after a long 12-hour journey of slogging your luggage is about as good as you can end an evening, so that's exactly what I did. And then I went to bed and woke up to the next morning. Seriously, that looks so pretty, an almost perfectly clear sky. You don't get to see that often, especially in England. 
and me, I had the best outfit to go outside. Seriously, look at me. Full pony. That's how I was gonna do some sightseeing today. But you can't go sightseeing on an empty stomach, so I filled up on the English breakfast. We have a bunch of ham, um, black pudding, I think that's what that's called, and sausages. We have some hash browns, a bunch of eggs, mushrooms, beans, tomatoes, and as someone who's pretty ravenous, so we put a lot of that on a plate. And then, um, there was another plate, and this was sort of a dessert thing, but I also had the need to unicycle. Look at this! I put a little bit of banana and put the chocolate cream onto the bread with the banana, and that was pretty, pretty nice. But I had some leftover banana, and so I dunked it into as well. So with a full tummy, I decided it was time to go out and do some sightseeing. Look at how many pigeons there are. They were kind of blocking my way as I tried to go to the first stop, but on the way there I also saw some pretty things. Look at this shopping center that's like inside of a building that looks almost ancient. That was such a pretty sight. Here we have another angle. Very, very beautiful. And also on the way I saw this interesting sign. I don't know if they actually throw pizzas around this area. Seems a little dangerous, but here is where we were actually headed to. The National Justice Museum. Seriously, it was a museum, and I thought, why the hell not? Let's take a look and see what they do. But actually, it's super pretty inside. Look at this, this little roof. This is super duper gorgeous. And my luck being me, I ran into a test trial where you could sort of role play. And I got Rawson, who's basically a friend of the felon. So that was pretty nerve wracking. Um, and yes, ponies, we weren't allowed to film the actors, that's why they're, you know, censored. But look at the pretty room, this is super gorgeous. Moving along, we got to see a little bit of a break area, very pretty to see those. We're gonna actually do something cool here in a moment. But moving along, we got to see the fancy wigs that they wore back then, which was interesting. Then we got to learn about some of the methods they used back then. Not so nice to do that one. The ducking stool is basically putting you in water. Um, then we have some prison corridors and a family activity. I had to try this one, ponies. We try it. <laughs> <laughs> then we get to see how prisoners used to be taken care of back then, they would have very simplistic rooms. But we would also learn how this is when they started to think about rights for the prisoners, how they would treat them, they were figuring it out. And um, back then it was not so nice for them, they stored them in little holes like this one. And um, look at how scary this corridor is. It's time to be medium extra sneaky. But moving along, we have this, which actually shows us that they had to pay in order to be prisoners. Yes, they had to pay like a little bit of tax to be there. And um, here's a room that was like a, a, a cell if you were a very bad pony. We get locked in there, it's so dark, I could barely see anything in there. I did not dare to go in there. But look at how, you know, how thankful it is that there's lights, because otherwise you just get lost. And here's another place you could get lost, and a place to be forgotten. That's how they would store people back then. If they wanted to, you know, do something horrible to them, is an oubliette. It's basically the sinkhole and you're stuck down there. That's it. You're literally supposed to be forgotten. It comes from the French word, oubliette. Anyway, over here, we have a pencil and a piece of paper which is in the corner from earlier where you can relax and of course I drew a pony key because you could draw keys there and I put hoof to heart on it because that's what the, the show teaches us and I actually left uh, one of them there you see there's two and one of them I took home as a souvenir but the other is there and if you want to you know get that you can you can totally you can totally get that anyway it was time to go on to the next site to see and on the way there are passed by the university the only one in line was this pigeon but everyone else was not there yet jeez but and we passed the university you get to this the arboretum and um, that arbor means tree for anyone who's not paid attention in class. And this was a park that was all about showing off the wonderful plants. I'd say this looks pretty amazing. Look at how peaceful this is. But over here, you also see how they put them apart very strategically to make the part look even prettier. But we got to see even more. Like, look at this. This was called the Chinese Garden. And you see all the, 
the flower walls that is pretty pretty beautiful but the animals are super chill here look at this squirrel that was just casually out here eating nuts And I would keep walking along, admiring the many sights to see. Look at these. I think these were cherry blossoms way in the back there. Super awesome. Then over here we have ducks in a pond. Of course, you can't miss those. But there were other birds here. Most notably these. And yes, these are actually not real birds. But um, it was still curious to see nonetheless. But... I had to make sure to leave the park pretty quickly because at 6.30 you literally get locked in. Don't want to have that happen to me. So I got out and um, that means I had to find some more food. And I actually got some cookies from a store this time. Let's see how these taste, ponies. Time to test another cookie. This one is from one of the stores here. Let's see how this one competes with the one that we bought yesterday, huh? Hmm. Mm hmm Really, really good taste. I think those are almost a tad too hard for me, but still pretty solid cookie. Definitely a good one, but I don't think this competes with the store one. This is not quite as amazing, but still pretty solid cookie. I'd say give, give it an 8 out of 10. This is still pretty freaking amazing. And what goes better with the snack than cider? I don't think much does. So we're going to do this left to right. We're going to do the other two as we go through this montage. But we're going to start with this one. It is in a can. I've never seen a can this big. Look at how tall this is. This is more than half a liter of cider in a can. I've never seen that before. So this is going to be interesting. So let's pour this one. Let's pour this one. Let's see what this is. Ooh. That looks amazing. I'm just gonna do a little bit. Just so we can take a gaze at... Look at how golden this is. Let's look at this from the side seriously. This looks amazing. I already know this is gonna be amazing, but let's verify this one, ponies. Hmm? Oh, wow, this is... Mmm. Oh, I like this. This has some very intense, bitter, apple-y... And also, I'd say, what else is that? It almost feels like cinnamon, but also wood notes in a way. This is very complex flavors. I like this one. This is a good one, every pony. But the evening would set in, and that means I had to look for some dinner to eat, and I found Mason. This was an interesting little Chinese all you can eat buffet, and as someone who destroys buffets, it was time to shine. But before we get to seeing how many plates I ate, let's take a look at this. We have these pressure cookers. Then we have all these little stations with meat, more meat, noodles. Um, yeah, but here's the first plate of things that I ate. Then there's the second plate of things that I ate. Then we get to take a peek inside. That was the third plate of things that I ate. And I think I ate five plates in total. And at some point it was like, let's have dessert. And um, yeah, look at the dessert. It was pretty cool. And you see these little three. These are, I think, um, I don't know what they're called. Eclairs, I think, right? And they're filled. But you may be wondering, isn't this a tiny plate? Are you getting full? Let's talk about that. You see what this is? This is an ice cream machine. And I had one bowl. And then I found the chocolate fountain and had a second bowl of ice cream with fruit. And I think that's when I had my fill. So in total about five plates of normal food and then like two bowls of dessert. I was, I was out there. And as someone who just realizes now that it cost 16 bits to be there, it was about two bits per plate that I ate there. I got my money worth a lot there. But I was stuffed. I had to slog my way back to the hotel. But, ponies, going to the hotel means you can take another bath, which is what I did. And then I took a look at some British TV. This was, uh, I don't know, I think this was called The Voice, which is kind of pretty. And thus ends the second day. Seriously, I get to wake up to this every time I'm there. This is the next day. Look at how pretty white these sheets are. And of course, this means breakfast time, like Sunny tells us. I didn't even show you the dessert aisle from day one at the hotel. We have a bunch of fruits and milk 
And of course, I got another big, big plate of food. And we had the combo from the previous day, which I really liked. But I also had some cereal, and my unicycle things kicked in again. So I put bananas into the cereal. My bananas! My bananas! Okay, seriously, folks, I need to calm down. Um, with a very sugary breakfast, I headed out for another day of sightseeing before I would meet my roommate. And, um, yeah, look at how sunny it is. We, the weather was just so gorgeous, complete opposite from what I saw the last time. Seriously, last time it was rainy every single day. This time it was only rainy on one day. And where was I headed? To the city of caves. Well, why is it called that? Because Nottingham is very famous for having a bunch of caves right underneath the city. And you have to go through this maze of what looks like subway tunnels to get there. But eventually you get to this sign, Danger, keep away from cliff face. But if you go down the cliff, you actually get into the caves. Look at how pretty it is. But also how spacious, how large these are. These are dugout ponies. Wanted apprentices. I don't even know what that was, but it was just so interesting to see all these corners. Then we got to see the tannery, um, yeah, the tannery is where they make leather every pony. And we also learned that these caves were used for bunker purposes, like there was a war that happened and they like hid in it when the planes came, that's also what they told us, but this was the best part. Because it got actually mixed up into a school class, if y'all remember my outfit. So this guy that you see right here thought I was a pupil for a solid 20 minutes until I was like, okay, I'm going now, when I like left them at the end, which was kind of silly. Um, but yeah, I followed them around for a little bit. We have an underground kitchen area because living was kind of cheap here because it's a cave. And over here we see a furnace set up, very pretty. But um, eventually I was done with the caves and we go over here. The pre-registration of UK PonyCon was active and they had to go there. And ponies, I was the first attendee who got their ticket. Look at this pretty sight. All of them are ready, but I was a first. And look at my triple glasses. I had vision of the next 10 years in front of me. That's how I got that one. But um, yes, eventually had to go into another hotel because that's where me and my roommate were staying. But we see Izzy spin here. At this point, he's sort of like a re recurring background character every time. But seriously, his pleasure is just is so impressive. But the hotel was the premier inn, and this was actually an official thing. I think you got like some special UK pony con cards if you stayed there. Yeah, if you remember my outfit, this is what I was preparing for because I was about to meet my roommate and I had to be mega sneaky to see them, and that's what was sort of always eyeing that front door. But eventually, I got to surprise them. But first, let's take a look at the hotel room, everybody. And this is why we're in another hotel. Am I too good for one hotel and one trip? I don't know, but let's see what kind of room we have this time. Let's see what it comes with. It comes with... Ooh. Wait! What's that noise? <gasps> Hello, Flopbox! It hey comes there. with a roommate this time! Are you included in the service? Uh, no, you came with my server because I paid for this Oh, room. right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am the service. I didn't notice. <laughs> but, excuse me. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is Fallon Cortez who was my roommate, but let's take a look at the, the setup that I had for the weekend. I put my little hoodie over here, so I had a little hidey corner. And um, yeah, Fallon had all this stuff over there. Seriously, look at his bags. He brought so much stuff to the to the convention. Seriously, look at how many snacks he set up in this room for me. There was no way I was gonna eat all of that. That's so much, as someone who's trying to lose weight. But it was pretty. I ate some and I brought some home for another video. But ponies, I also became a fluff butt as of that day because I got one of his buttons. Even our cameras got to meet each other for, for the first time. It was pretty nice. And um, yeah, eventually we went down to the bar and we got to see this. Very familiar banner from the last year. Foul and auctioned it because it had Sparky on it. And we got to sign it, was, it was real nice. But then came a very special moment because it was time to exchange gifts. Look at this. 
You're toast. Oh, oh yeah. Is this the dream? Yeah, Fallen was very happy that he got this, but over here we have Kiki Bat, and we get to see her reaction to one of the gifts. Yeah, it's, yeah, you're holding it. Why is everybody taking do not, everybody's do taking not, cover? Do watch do yourselves. Not squeal, I swear. Turn around. There's a risk of injury here. Oh God. Three, two, I'll show you. Three, two, oh my God. Alright. No! I did also bring some gifts, and one of my gifts even made some pony cry. You know who you are and your crushiness. Then we were actually treated to something special because ponies, y'all know I have a panel, so along with other panelists like Fowlin and Lightning, we would actually get to see where our panel was and it also was sort of spooky seeing the convention building at night. But um, over here we have some interesting little roles of the main six as we, you know, wandered along to the room. Then this is sort of the main room where they have all the big panels. That was um, lightning pitches room and over here we have the smaller room with that was for Fowlin in my panels It was pretty interesting, but we got to test the tech which is important because I seriously had like three copies of my panel I did not want to disappoint my first time around and over here We have Sunny who was super smiley and happy It was wonderful to see all the pony stuff being put up That was kind of nice and here we have a very black square. What is that, huh? We're gonna take a look at that at the opening ceremony in full action. Seriously, look at how much space there is down there. They weren't gonna need it because they got sold out every pony. I don't think that ever happened. And of course, I found a cutout of Izzy and had to pose with it because it's my favorite and she's my queen. And over here, after we got to see the convention, we went back to the bar with Lightning Pitch and every pony else, had some drinks, and then he introduced me to this gift. Oh, my comedy little boy, he is precious. And over here we have some more precious plushies that we got to admire from every pony else, along with great drinks. And um, it was not drinks just for the sake of drinks, but actually to go with the first time I ever had Domino's Pizza. Take a look at that, ponies. Sir, oh, it's all my fire. Look at that. Is that all for me? Yes, it can. Oh, okay, here goes. You guys are ready. Right, he's about to try. Here goes. I will. Huh? Is that nice? <laughs> yeah, very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Careful, it might be hot. <laughs> this face. Oh my gosh, this is good. We've been doing it wrong this whole time. Have you? And we would get to wind down the day by watching ponies play Monopoly, which is always heated if you ever played that game. My first gift for New Leaf Pony, right there. And yes. there you are. <laughs> Unwrap it, go on. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. God that it's thank I'm God that the text is facing the right way. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what this is, ponies. It's a it's it's a brain. Don't worry. Is about to die, isn't he? Okay. Keep, keep it that way round. Yes. Make sure the paper's off first. Oh gosh. <laughs> so get yeah, right, three. Turn it around. around. This three. way or this uh, way? landscape. Okay. Thanks, landscape. Turn so rotate yeah. around. Uh, Rotate. Okay. No, no, like, like the old your way, like. Okay. Go. Okay. <laughs> oh, look at him. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah. Okay, right now. <laughs> My sparkly boy. Show it off, right? Him kissing comet. <laughs> right in, right in, Starlight Ridge. I'm gonna you die. That's your first one. <laughs> And eventually it was time to go to bed and here we see all the lovely things that was given on day one. Thank you Fowlin, thank you Lightning Pitch for giving me these wonderful things. I will cherish them of course, also that picture. Yeah, it's, uh, it tried to tell me something, but eventually it was time for the next day. Seriously, look at how early we had to get up. The sun isn't even out yet. But this time I had a bat in breakfast. Is this what the English mean with that? And it was cookies and bat every pony. Those are still pretty good, but 
So you look at this, you get to wake up to that much pony when you're roommates with Fallon, which is just insane. And Izzy was like, you need to go to the convention. So the, to the convention, we went. And I was there about two hours early, or not quite two hours early, but if you take a real close look, you already see there's like 10 people there. But um, yeah, my dedication would pay off eventually because it was here. Not like at the front front, but still very close to the entrance. And um, yeah, over here we see how this queue would eventually build up. We even had this frozen warrior. Over here we had this griffin who was checking on every pony to make sure they're all having a good time and I absolutely loved their company. And um, look at this, the line would just keep going. I think the left one is for those who didn't pre-register and on the right was everyone who did. And I think the center was for special access needs. It was, I think they had four queues. I think that's what the plan was, it was just wild. But we got to meet so many people in this long line. That's the good thing about these, these um, lines. You get to talk to ponies, but eventually we got to go inside. Look at how many people just pushing it. I was so happy that it was near the front. Seriously, look at look at look at how long this is. This is just wild. Like tenth person inside because we were here two hours early. We're dedicated around here. There's just so many people trying to get into this convention. Seriously, look at all those seats. They were about to be filled. But before I did go down there, I actually got to see this because this convention was in its 20th iteration. We got to learn about the previous ones and I only know the one from last year. Oh boy, have I been missing out. But on the way down, I may or may not have gotten sidetracked because the vendors were there. We get to take a look at some of the stalls. We have some stickers along with this Luna plushie. Then we have a bunch of play sets to see here with figurines at the top right. More plushies. And I think at the top we see a bunch of picture frames and books at the very back. Then moving along we see this massive, massive Starlight Glimmer. I don't even know if she was for sale, but if, if you if you buy that you're gonna need like a truck to bring that back home. And ponies, y'all remember I took the plane so I had to be careful to not bring too much stuff back. But let's take a look at the opening ceremony that I finally got to see. Doesn't mean it's waste, T-R-E-S-H, with a dash of taste. that they used and we got to see a little bit of an animation of other conventions and if you look right here yep that's where we're gonna be next week and um bexy told everyone to have a good time but then britannia came on stage and told bexy to have a good time so everyone was having a good time after the opening ceremony it was back out to the vendor hall and look at this, we have a bunch of figurines, stickers, um, I think those are keychains at the top left. We have more figurines and plushies. Then here we have lanyards, charms, stickers, a lot of smaller things. And over here we have a little bit of a battle. G5, I have done you well today. Y'all know I voted for Sparky. I had to represent everybody. Somebody does G5 stuff, we, we gotta represent. But then it was time to go to the first panel, everypony. And the first panel was this. It was Pony Card. And yes, this is a contest in Mario Kart. Really unusual, but also a mod that I didn't know even existed. And yes, it is exactly what you think it is. It is Mario Kart with ponies and we get to play some. But there was also um, Rainbow Dash Attack, you know, the one that we won the last time. I casually put a high score up there. See, this is what the guy before me got, 21,000 points. Those are rookie numbers. But eventually, um, it was my turn to join the, the fray. We did all right, but unfortunately we came second in our race after a very heated battle with Trixie. Uh, sorry, Twilight. But there was a second round of races and we would try to go there, see if we can get a better time. You need to top four to be able to make it to the final. After our little test, it was time to once again go out to the vendor hall and look at some more stuff. Look at that, plushies, keychains, 
and um, these are even more stickers. And um, here, I think these are some more play sets, right? We see some badges at the top left. Those are pretty adorable. And um, here, moving along, I think these are some more sticker designs even. But here we have an adorable cosplay. I'll admit I don't know who this character is. That that was super adorable, but I don't know who this character is. If some pony knows, do tell me about it. And then I looked at the, the con guide and realized, wait a minute, that's my panel. I need to be there. Yeah, some ponies didn't even know my name or who I was, so this was kind of an interesting one. But over here we have some names that I do know, that is Ponycon Hollet, where we'll be also holding a similar panel when we get there. And before I got to my panel, which was sort of in the evening, there were other panels to look at, like this one. This was the Chaos panel, and it was sort of a quizzy one, where you had to answer trivia questions. We would see a similar one to that later. And we had questions like this as well. What is Sparky's last name? If, if someone gets that wrong, um, I think you're gonna summon Fowlin in your closets, watch it. But ponies, after a little bit of quizziness, it was time to eat. And this is what the English call tea. And yes, tea is an occasion rather than just a beverage for the English. Well, I'm not proud of it, but it exists. I'm, I did terrible. Yeah, ponies, that was my attempt at making a scone. I'm not proud of what I did, but it is what it is. <laughs> that poor scone, though. But there's some pretty things. We got a little bit of a batch to take home. But also look at the pretty napkin. Here we have some sandwiches that I got to try with eggs. Then over here we have a little bit of a sweet treat that is filled with apples, whose name I've totally forgotten up to this point. Then over here we have a piece of cake. Also don't know what it's called, but it tasted delicious. And over here we have Fowl that is very happy to have been given a plushie of Sparky. Very, very sweet. Look at how he smiles. Then we have this menu. Let's show you all the things that we got to eat. Uh, I don't know which one of the things that I eat was what. Look at the cakes. No idea which which is which. But to end the confusion and to walk off the excess calories, we got to go back into the Hall of Goods. Look at this wonderful table with all the buttons and stickers that over here we have a bunch of interesting figurines. These are Wonderbolt figurines. I didn't even know they made those. Top left has an Izzy plush and a Zecora plush, which is really, really massive. More massive plushies down this way. And it also has little bags that you can carry around. Look at the Apple one. That looks like a very great accessory. And then it was time to go to the next panel. And this is the Chase. It was hosted by Fowlin and Cheeky, who we see right here. And even the plushies were very happy to be there. But what is this? This is The Chase, and it is a British show, and you basically have to answer questions while running from a person. Now, Fowlin was the chaser, so his job was to, like, catch people so they wouldn't take the prizes. And Cheeky was the moderator, who, like, asked ponies the questions. I think that's how that went. After the panel, it was time to go outside again and take a look at how many people are at this main stage. This place was packed the whole weekend. There were so many people on the premises. I hear it was 1,300 something. Just wild. But what's even wilder is Britannia herself. I got to take some wonderful pictures with her. Look at how happy she is. She is just so glad to be there. Then over here, we have Dr. Hooves who was having a good time. Also, who's that pony on the left? But let's talk about those wonderful cosplays. Those look brilliant to every pony. What are those? Are those foxes in the background? Those look adorable. But then it was time for my own panel, and I was a bit nervous because it was the first physical panel, but the second panel overall. And here is a few clips of it. And um, a lot of them you can't even play anymore. Curiously enough, down here we have this game that survived, and so this does make the question. And after the panel, I got to meet some wonderful ponies who talked to me, wanted to know a little bit more about what I do. Here's Lightning Stripe, who follows the channel, and here we have um, Coit Chester. I hope I pronounced that right, but that name was actually going to be very important because he also participated in the Mario Kart, and he was gonna be good at it. After my panel and being nervous, I was ready for a little bit of partying, and so I joined them for a couple minutes, but after joining them, I was like, you know, let's go to another panel. And this is this panel. This one is about all the cheap things that you can get from Timu, 
Alibaba and all of those websites that sell knockoff pony stuff and we got to see what you could actually get there. Look at this crazy cadence. Then we have Pet Elf, which is a ripoff of Pokemon. This is very scary Applejack. <laughs> this, I don't know, was this supposed to be Lightning Strike? I don't know. Then we have Apom, a Pokemon. <laughs> that just looks like it gives you nightmares, seriously. Then we have this very excited Eevee and an even more excited Squirtle. There was just so much randomness. A perfect way to end the day one of this convention. But I needed food and I got the classic, the thing you can't go wrong with, McDonald's. Very interesting to be at, the, at a British one. And I got a very unique burger. This one was a Philly cheesesteak burger. But let's have a taste test. So every pony, this is probably the... What? <laughs> I also would get jump scared by Kiki and um, after a lot of laughs and giggles and fun it was time to go to bed and Fowlin showed off one of his merch things that he has and this is a projector that puts pictures onto the ceilings when you sleep and it's sort of pretty. Look at this. This is super gorgeous. I fell asleep very quickly. But it got woken up by Izzy really early in the morning, and that's because it was time for day two. And for day two, I got this as a breakfast. Apparently, they have meal deals in their supermarkets, and so I got whatever this sandwich was and wanted to see what it is. But it's also curious to see what their supermarkets look like. Pretty curious little selection of things, but this was sort of a small one, but... Day two does in fact begin with cues, and this time we have working cues, everypony. Look at this, there's technically two cues in the middle, so that's good. But also everyone who got like the perk of having a faster cue got their cue, so that's great. That is a lot of cues. Anyway, there was also the tram that you could watch when you were standing in line, so that was kind of cool. I think that is the only mode of transport that I didn't, didn't ride in my stay at UK PonyCon this time, but outside of that, I think I got everything. Anyway, eventually more people came into the line and we were basically back to how big it was in day one. And they immediately went back to the vendor hall because I had more stuff to buy. Seriously, with, with all the pounds that I had, I needed to get rid of them before I got back home. So over here we have a massive pony. I don't know their name. They're from a previous generation, but look at how big this is compared to the card in the top left. That thing is massive. You need you need like your own house for this thing. Then over here we have a bunch of figurines. It is just impressive to see how many there is. In the top left you see like previous generations. And as you go to the right, you see more Generation 4 and Generation 5. Then over here, we have a bunch of accessories, every pony. Look at those shoes. That is impressive, but none of those would fit me. <laughs> no chance. Not delicate enough for that, ponies. Anyway, over here, we have some more plushies, but we also see some bear plushies. Those seem familiar, but I don't know from which show they are. Then moving along, we have even more figurines. There were so many ponies, but I was really looking forward to some arts and crafts, and that's why I went to this table. So what you got to do here is take these butterflies that you see, and you got to decorate them. You got to literally do Izzy's activity and unicycle them and put things onto them, like the like the sparkly buttons that you see there. You see pens in the background and even see some letters that you can stick onto them. And of course, I did that and made an Izzy side and a Comet side because those go together nicely. So this is so great and um, you could basically do it the unicorn way and just put random stuff onto there and make it the true unicorn experience. And over here we have some plushies. Look at Izzy with those gorgeous glasses, seriously, but also sip with her visor. Two very amazing plushies, I say. Then moving along we have some more lanyards. Which, that's a table from earlier, <laughs> seriously, do leave. But then over here we have another stand with a bunch of figurines and playsets in the center that you see here. Those are also very cool. But over here we have Izzy and um, she was so happy because it was time to go to the next panel. And this was 92. No, that's not the name of the panel, but a number you need for the panel. And of course the panel in question is the charity auction every pony because they use the reverse auction system. But let's take a look at some of the highlights. Seriously, there's so much stuff that if we would go through every single thing, we'd be here for an additional hour. They had a whole 120 items in total. But we have a wonderful banner that they started us off with. 
Then over here we have a Fluffle plush, a very creative one. Then moving along we have some items signed by Kelly Sheridan, the voice of Starlight Glimmer, from last year at Every Pony. We do get to see her this year at PonyCon Holland. Then over here we have the Spirit of Forest. Those are comic books donated by Fowlem Cortez. Who's that pony? <laughs> Never heard of that one before. But there was a lot of banter in this auction like always. Then over here we have a Junior Monopoly with My Little Pony. I didn't even know that existed. Then over here we have the most valuable item of this auction, the Britannia Blush. Seems unsuspecting, but it went away for 1250 to this wonderful pony down there. Then over here we have a portrait which was donated by Fowlin, the real Fowlin. Then here we have some towels and pony figurines. On this next one we have a pocket watch. That one actually looks really amazing and unique. Then over here we have a Pip toy that's actually signed by AJ Bridal, who we've gotten to see last year at PonyCon Holland. Yeah, seriously, I think they switched to cons this year, basically. But in between the auction, we were actually looking for the pony cart round two, but what we didn't know back then is that the guy who was running it was actually stuck in the auction as well, so it got moved, but I didn't know about it. But instead, there was karaoke, so I sang a song. But then I went back to the auction. Over here we have a mystery bag, and this was kind of my cue because I also bid on a mystery bag, and we're gonna open that in the separate video. Then over here we have another roller banner, then here we have yet another mystery box, and then it was my time to shine, number 92, and I would get myself the mystery present. Then over here we have a woodburn box, that is some very impressive art, as someone who's horrible at crafting, this just impresses me that much more. But eventually the auction ended and it was time for LineCon version 2 because everyone got in line to get their stuff. Seriously, this is a unique way to end an auction. And I think we were stood there for, you know, a solid 45 minutes. But Misty was here to brighten the mood. She was having a good time. Wonderful plushie. Then over here we got to see some of the other things that were... I think those were off from the Tombola. And um, My Little Cuphead is an interesting one because I hear there is a mod for that game that we played where we raged a bunch. Might have to revisit it again for the DLC. Then here is my bag. The thing I got. Look at this. This is just chock full with random pony things. But um, yeah, this is so much stuff that it definitely deserves its own little video. But eventually we would make it to the end of the line. And that means I could go to the next panel held by Lightning Pitch who talked about the many ancient brony videos that come from generation 4, um, even something like the um, I'm Octavia videos, those kind of things, and it was just an hour of pure nostalgia, which was very enjoyable. Then over here we have the next panel, which happened in the same room, so I basically just sat down and waited. And this was called Who's That Pony? And what you do here is you have to answer a test for Twilight, and you basically have to guess the names of ponies that they would show, and this was what my exam looked like at the end. But it wasn't enough. Some pony actually got, I think, 33 points, so we did good, but just not that good. But still, come on, 26 is still a passing score, ponies. But then, the convention slowly did start to wind down, but I was not gonna let that happen until I got some more karaoke into my system every pony, but then I actually made it to the main stage and to the final stretch of this weekend. There we have the wonderful screen in action. Seriously, that was one of the best additions on this weekend. But they would end it with Pony Kart 64 tournament. They actually did have the second round. It just happened while I was in line to get my stuff from the auction. Very unfortunate timing, but we do have four finalists and we get to see them race together and see who comes out on top every pony. And if you see at the bottom right here, this is the pony who said hi to me during my panel. So I was hoping that he would take everyone out. And let's see how he did. Welcome to the Tracy. Another overtake coming up just for the finish line. Yeah, this was Toad's Turnpike, and he would win here and move on to the final match. And here is my reaction to him crossing the finish line, every pony. I was uh, very emotional when that happened. Yes! Yes! 
Yes! Yes! He did it! He did it! He actually did it! <laughs> and that is what a winner looks like. He took everyone to Value City and became its mayor. Very, very impressive and well done. We're definitely gonna have to try to actually catch the second round of cart next time and see if we can join the fray. But we also learned that Ember smells. I don't know why, but apparently that is a thing. Then I got to see Izzy and got a picture with her. She definitely dug my glasses. But then it was time for the actual closing ceremony. And Britannia was like, we're going over time again. We need to do the closing ceremony. So Bexy gave us a great closing ceremony. And over here we see the gang, the organizers, the ponies behind the convention, and as someone who staffed twice before for another convention. I tell you, it is a lot of hard work to get all this done for a single weekend, but it is so, so satisfying to see it all come together the way it did. But let's hear some parting words from AJ Bridal this time. See what she has to say about this convention. Get to know a little bit, and every single one of you were so nice, and so welcoming, and so, um, yeah, just lovely. Like, it is just so much love radiating from uh, the people the ponies, all of you that come to these events, and uh, I just, my cup is so full. <laughs> and it's always a pleasure, absolutely always a pleasure, even you, Emma. Wow. <laughs> um, and that was it. That was the end of the convention. Everyone had to get out. Seriously, ponies, on the next day this would return to become a normal university. That is the one thing I just cannot wrap my head around. And um, this is what I got to see when I looked up. It was rainy. That was the only time I would actually get rain during my whole weekend, which is super impressive, but I guess the Pegasi really wanted to remind me that it was actually in England. Then over here we have Alphabetal with Misty. He was having a good time, and he would suggest a trade of con badges, and thanks to him I have a um, Comet badge now, and he has the Misty badge, the bronze one that I have, much thanks to him. But then it was time to go to our rooms and sort all of our merch because I had to bring my stuff back to Germany, but Fowlin also put all of his things, and we got to see what there was, and Fowlin got some ball toy things that have random ponies in it, and apparently he didn't say Bing Bong, and he got Jinxie. Take a look at this. But if you didn't know, I got four of these Mara balls. I called it. If it happens, I called it. Oh my god. <laughs> this, this is like, the... it's like a workout getting these up. <laughs> yes. Oh. You fucking... oh my god, really? <laughs> no. No way. No, no, no. Oh no, it's Izzy. Ooh. It's Izzy. Look at Izzy. that. Izzy. Izzy. Hey. I it was another Misty because of the blue hair, but it's an Izzy. Hey, Iz. You won't like this. Oh! Well, at least you she's can't do that. Yeah. No! Watch this be a, a duplicate of Izzy. No, that better not happen. <laughs> it's another Sparky. Oh, oh, gosh. oh no, I may have jinxed it. If this contains another Izzy, <laughs> I'm shoving New Leaf right into that bar. <laughs> okay! Oh no! I can't believe that. Are you serious? Four Myra balls and... Yeah, ponies, this is what happens when you let the alicorn be your roommate. Magic happens all around. Then over here was a special screenshot because me and all of the friends that I made throughout this weekend, we got to react to some Generation 5 things. You can watch the entire react on Fowlin's channel when it comes out. Super hilarious stuff. But ponies, eventually I did have to go to bed and go back to Equestria and this is what I woke up to. More cloudy weather and um, yeah, I was missing the sunshine from the previous days. But I also found this, a blanket that someone had apparently dropped outside of the hotel, so I returned it to the reception. Hopefully the pony got this one back. And here we have the university going back to literally being a university again. And it looks like ponies are going in for day three of the convention, but unfortunately that is not the case. I got to say goodbye to Nottingham, look at the pretty skies, but I did need some breakfast and here is some breakfast. I had 
whatever those two things are. Here's some taste testing ponies. This is great, but I want to see what this is. It is filled with magic. Oh boy, seriously, this is pretty good. Mm. And with that, I had to go and leave Nottingham, but I saw this on the way to my extra dimensional cart, and this is a very strong quote to remember this weekend by. As someone who is struggling and healing, this is a very much resonating with me with all the happy people and the niceness around. It just made you feel safe and allowed you to sparkle like Izzy says. But ponies, this is where I make my outro on the cart that took me back to Equestria. Listen to this. Every pony, we are ready to lift off to Equestria. Hold every pony. I think we have to fly into the skies, every pony. Look at it, seriously. This has been an amazing UK Pony Con 2024 journey for me. And um, I look forward to the next convention. Maybe I come back next year, but we don't know that just yet, every pony. But all I know is that we're gonna look forward, even if the convention's over and we gotta go back to the normal work. Doesn't mean the fun ends, the friendship and memories do remain with us. And we bring them into the next time we meet our friends. And with that, we are pretty much at the end of my vlog. I did want to take an airplane, but the pilots were like, nearly if you're not supposed to ride in this wing, so I took the roller coaster instead. Anyway, ponies, I can't wrap up this vlog without showing off all the goodies that I got from this convention. So I'll see you ponies at the outro. Hope you liked it. And if you want to see all the 1,700 pictures, take a peek at our Patreon. That's where I dump everything that I can't include here. Otherwise, we'd be here for like four hours, ponies. Oh, boy. And here we are at the outro. What an amazing journey to call my memories, everypony. And I thank everyone who was there during my journey, who I got to talk to, I got to meet, who I got to make friends with. All of you are what makes these kinds of journeys worth and what gives all of these memories a smile and warm feeling. And of course, this is also the kind of vibe that keeps people coming back to these kind of conventions is the openness, the warmness, the looking out for another. That is what keeps people drawn to these conventions, and maybe that's gonna draw me back next year. We'll see. But ponies, as you'll know, my convention year is just not over yet. In about six days, I'm gonna be at PonyCon Holland, and there's gonna be another panel, another vlog, and if you don't wanna miss any of that, you know you gotta push the red dot button down below. Anyway, if you wanna see all of the loot that we got, there is a separate video that you can watch right now. It's about two minutes, and you get to see all of the crazy stuff that I brought home from the UK. So let's take a look at that for anyone who wants, and I thank all of you so much for stopping by, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, and remember, ponies, alicorns are jinxy. Watch out for that one. Seriously, Fowlin, I hope he's ready for that the next time. <laughs>